Today, all or most photos are digital, but if you're my age or older, your entire childhood is recorded in printed photos. If you're younger, you may be the person who inherited all of the family pictures. Do you find yourself overwhelmed? What do you do with the boxes and boxes and boxes of photos that you have? How do you organize them? In this video, I wanna introduce you to the way that I'm organizing and preserving my printed photos before I put them in a book. And in my next video, I want to talk to you about some strategies on how to organize them. This is an example of some of my family photos that were not protected. I found these in an open box in the front porch of my aunt's home where they were exposed to all of the highs and lows of humidity and temperature. This is my heritage. And a lot of these I probably will not be able to get straightened out. They are tightly, tightly wound but I've been able to spend some time scanning them. So I'll still be able to use these down the road, but this is the kind of thing that you want to avoid. While you're going through the photos in boxes and bags and envelopes and all over the place, you might also take a look at some of your older albums. If you have these sticky backed albums, we call them magnetic albums, your photos might be turning yellow like this. This was one of my client's books and her whole childhood looked like that. It was really, really tragic. It gives you, the, over time, that really beautiful autumn look that, frankly, we don't want, do we? So if you have books like this, chances are they're pretty easy to get out because the adhesive dries up over time. But if you leave them in these books, they are gonna to continue to yellow. The good thing about having them in albums is you probably have them in some sort of chronological order. So that's a positive. My favorite way and the way that I have chosen to organize my own personal photos is to put them in a Creative Memories Power Sort box. A Power Sort box is roughly the size of a shoe box, give or take. It depends on the shoe box, of course, but it's 13 inches in length, seven and three quarters inch wide. And when this is put together, it's gonna be five and three quarters inch tall. There are a set of directions inside. I'm going to put this aside for now. This is the main part. This plastic that's holding it together is recyclable. So it comes collapsed. It's not difficult to put together. Years ago, I'd be the one who would order this for a customer and then I would put it together for them. But now I'm working with people all over the country, so it's good for everybody to know how to do this. So I'm just hyperextending this slightly in the corners, this section right here, so that it doesn't collapse on itself. Over time, as you fill this up, this will get more straight. Then this back part comes over and I'm just gonna push that in, try to get that in a nice 90 degree angle. And it has these little tabs that go in these little grooves. And you wanna listen for a snap. You hear that? If it doesn't snap, then you've got the tendency of it falling apart. And you don't want that, especially if you've got this thing filled with photos. There you go. So there's the main container. And notice it has this on the front so you can personalize it. Um, I've put business cards in there. I've labeled it based on what photos are in there. So that makes it really easy when you look at it on a shelf to know what's in it. And then it comes with six compartments. Each of these compartments hold 200 photos. And like I said, there's six of them. So think about that, do the math. That means you can put 1,200 photos in every single box. And these will hold four by six, all the way up to five by seven. Of course, the older photos were, I don't know, like three and a half by five, I think. And as you got even older, some of those were square. But again, I'm just hyperextending this a little bit, folding this over, making sure it's a nice 90 degree angle. At the bottom, you have a flap that I'm folding all the way in, these all the way in, 
and then that tucks in and you notice here there's these little half circles you can tuck that in and then pop them out so now it looks like this on the outside and like this on the inside and you've got a compartment now I will say that is the way the company has you do it I personally have also done it on the outside and pop these inward that way I don't have my photos hitting this so it's a personal preference you can do it any way you want to do it By the way, I said that I hyperextended this. I'm really not hyperextending that. The only time I did that was on the inside here. I misspoke on that. Really, it's just a matter of folding it all the way in, like so, to make sure that everything lays nicely in 90 degree angles. So, voila, I have it filled. It has six compartments. Now, you also get six dividers and that is nice but for me personally I like to subdivide a lot more it's not enough for me this would give me one for each section which if that's sufficient for you fantastic but just recently a few months ago they started selling them in additional packages of 12 which I was celebrating I said that, that that's just the best thing ever I I really honestly think that everybody needs to get multiple extra to go with their box. And I also want to show you the lid. There's also this compartment at the top where you can tuck in larger pieces of memorabilia, larger photos. And then make sure that this tucks in and you've got that protected. Put the lid on and you have these elastic tabs loops to hold it nicely in place so if I drop this everything's not going to fall out of it and believe me I've dropped these things and I had a friend who did everything in shoe boxes and she had it at the top of her closet and one time the closet shelf broke everything went everywhere all of her organization gone that is another reason i really love that this is a box that stays together so let's take a look at how you fill it so this is what a filled power sort box may look like when you've got it filled with photos in a moment i do want to share with you some additional ideas of things that you might store in your power sort boxes but right now i want to point out a few more things to you one, the dividers are something you can write directly on. So you can identify what's in there. You can subdivide as much as you want. I like subdividing a lot more than just saying a decade. So that's why I like getting more and more of these. And I encourage other people to get at least a few additional sets. But a regular pencil, and I would suggest a white eraser, that will enable you to erase as you need to. These are things that I prefer the mechanical just because it's easier for me and um, I don't have to have a pencil sharpener. So these are something you can get from any art supply store. When you are organizing your photos, you may want to use a photo labeling pencil to write on the backs. Not everybody wants to write on the backs, but it's easier in the long run if some thought comes to mind. Um, identify who's in the photo or a specific date or something that say something happens to you somebody else picks up this box a decade or so from now your family members they know what's in here they understand who's in the photos they're less likely to just toss them I'll be honest photo labeling pencil caution do not use it on your dividers it will not erase but this is photo safe to use on the backs of your photographs. So feel free to use a photo labeling pencil. The don't use pens. I would suggest you don't use pens, especially if you're using something like a Sharpie. They do tend to bleed through 
to uh, the other side. So you don't want the writing on the image itself. And you also want to be careful too when you're sandwiching things. If you're writing on a pen with a pen on the back of this photo and it's sandwiched, I mean all of these are sandwiched. If it's sandwiched like this and it's a pen, sometimes I've seen where it's come off and it's on the image of the other photo. Just some things to be cautious about. One of the reasons I really like that these are erasable is the, the main purpose of me doing this. One, it's to preserve my photos. I'm, I'm keeping them from additional damage. I'm keeping them from dust. They're in dark storage. But the idea is to have this be a fluid system. So I get my photos organized and then I slowly start removing them and putting them into my scrapbook albums. Then eventually I probably want to erase this and make it the next year or wherever else it needs to go. So it's a nice fluid system. So now let's talk about some other things that you might use the power sort box for. You might have some of the old CDs, DVDs, they came with these contact sheets. All of these things you might want to preserve. This was something about the time they were still making negatives, but we're getting more starting to transition into digital. I've heard one person say she puts her flash drives with photos, her external hard drives in here, anything having to do with her digital way of preserving her photos. You might use it for greeting cards that you've received. You might be somebody who loves to make cards yourself. You've got six compartments right here. You could subdivide them based on get well cards, happy birthday, anniversary, generic, you know, just because I'm thinking about you type cards. But especially if you have a lot of cards that you've made, this is really nice to be able to make them up in advance and be able to just go in here as an occasion arrives, pull things out of it. It's very, very useful for that purpose. If you've been around for a while with Creative Memories, we had these older boxes that had journal boxes and mats in them. It's nice for storing things like that. Another thing that I've heard is using this as a memory box for each child. One woman was saying that she had a onesie in here, um, congratulation cards when the baby was born, things that came home with the baby from the hospital. I'm thinking you could put your loose teeth in there if you want as they're losing their teeth. Just anything that has any sentimental value pertaining to that particular child that will not fit in a photo album. Now that we've learned the basics of how the power sort box works, my suggestion would be to order a box and simply start filling it. I'll post my website below this video and I also have a Facebook page that I'll list there as well. And I really encourage you to get additional dividers while you're at it, plus a photo labeling pencil. And you might have enough photos that you might want to get more than one box. So it all really depends on the volume that you have. But right now, I wouldn't worry so much about an organization, just get them safely housed. In my next video, I'll talk about some strategies for organizing your printed photos themselves. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you like what you see, please be sure to click like and subscribe. If you want to be notified when I post the next video, and remember there's going to be a follow-up on this one, you want to make sure that you click on the bell. That way YouTube will notify you. But thank you for watching me today and happy scrapbooking.